Well, hi there. Welcome to my office. I am excited about showing you around and showing you how I'm using visual management and some lean principles in my office. I'll tell you, I am a little nervous about showing you my office for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that um, I think that there's going to be some people that see my office and just say, uh, wow, you know, Dr. Miller is a real weirdo. He's got blue tape all over his office and has labeled everything or, you know, whatever that is. Um, or people will think, uh, oh, well, in order to be lean, I've got to use blue tape and outline, you know, things in my office and, you know, outline the stapler or whatever that happens to be. Uh, and it's just not true. Um, and so one thing I want to try to point out, and especially as we walk through my office and I sort of show you around, is that my office layout and how I've used visual management in my office has um, transformed uh, over the years and I'm sure next year it's going to look different than it does this year uh, because my process changes uh, and the other thing is is that the things that you see in my office the reason that they're here is because of mistakes that have occurred uh, that I've encountered in the past um, or errors that I've seen or uh, waste that I have seen in my process and so when I see waste or when I encounter a problem in my work process um, I work to try to eliminate that and so instead of saying oh I wish I'd remember that or I'll have to remember that next time what I do is I put uh, visual management uh, in place to try to uh, eliminate that from my work process um, the other thing that uh, this visual management that you see in my office will do for uh, what it does for me is that it helps to keep my process stable. So it's real easy in a work system uh, over a period of time uh, to, for your processes to drift. Uh, so it's, you say, oh, well, I'm just going to set this over here, I'm going to set this over there, and it's not a big issue right now. But over time, those things build up, and all of a sudden, you know, you've got a sloppy office that's... Um, uh, that's non-productive or that's difficult to find things and so uh, by having some visual management in place and some standardization in place makes it a lot easier to to keep your process stable and then as you change process you change the visual management so um, let me walk you around and I'll show you some of the things um, that I want to show you in my office so this will start out over here this side of the office here's uh, sort of a bookshelf you know and it's just a normal bookshelf I do try to keep uh, for the books kind of them categorized and so I've got some labels on the shelves that just say this is what um, uh, this is the category of that book one uh, thing and I, you know, of course everything's labeled up here these are games and demos that I use uh, in my classes and uh, they're ordered basically in the order in which I use them in class. Uh, one convention that I like to use with shelving uh, that I've learned over the years is to reconfigure shelves so that they only fit the items that are on that shelf. So you notice some shelves are thicker and some are thinner and it depends on what's on the shelf. And as much as I can, I try to configure the shelving so that you can only fit things in, uh, in one place. Here's a file cabinet, and I want to show you something. You know, this is something that people might say, well, now that's just over the top. You know, why would you do that? Okay, so here's, this is step by step, step one, two, and three, about how to open the file cabinet. And you might say, well, that's, you know, a little bit of overkill. Um, I don't need it for me, uh, but my instructional assistants also use my office, and uh, this just happened last semester. Had um, uh, instructional assistant came in, needed to find a student's uh, exam to go over with them, and could not figure out how to get into the file cabinet. And honestly, you know, without this, now like down here, um, it's not obvious, you know, how to exactly get in. Is that a button you push, or, you know, do you push it up or down, or how does that work? Um, and so I said, well, you know what, I, you know, I can show the, the instructional assistant, but so that I don't have to show people over and over again, I just make these step-by-step -step instructions to make it easy to figure out how to open uh, that file drawer. So uh, that was a pretty easy fix and uh, solved that and I'll never have to deal with that problem uh, again. So uh, let's go over uh, around my uh, near my desk. Now I want to show you something uh, whenever I have consumable items and I'll show you several in my office like this is the board cleaner whenever I have consumable items I'll either have um, some sort of a tube in Kanban system or some sort of a reorder system so that I don't have to remember to reorder things and this is one of those things is the board cleaner and I don't know if you can even see the level of liquid that's in there uh, but I can and when the 
level of liquid gets below that line there, uh, then that's my signal to go back to the storage room and uh, refill that. All right, so here's my desk. And one of the concepts uh, with visual management is that there is a place for everything, and everything has its place, uh, and keeping things visual so you don't have to wonder where things go or what things are. So, you know, here's my keys, and I, I always know exactly where my keys are. Here's where I keep materials for uh, the next class session. So if I have handouts or things, I'll keep them there uh, for the next class sessions. Things that are closed that I need to know what's in the drawer. See, I don't have to wonder what's in my drawer. On the outside of things that are, that are normally closed, I'll have a planogram. So you can see this uh, is my office Kanban. It kind of has my extra items in there and tells exactly what's in that drawer. And so when you open the drawer, the drawer layout looks exactly the same as the planogram. And so, you know, I've got extras of the items that I need to replenish around in my office. Um, you know, one thing, and this is something that I did just a, um, I don't know, a couple of semesters ago. I just keep one thing of staples. I don't use a whole lot of staples. And um, so I just keep one string of staples. I don't even know how many staples are on that thing. But I didn't buy, see a need to keep 5,000 staples in my office drawer, which is, you know, what the normal box comes with and so when I need more I just go and, and uh, when I use that one that's my Kanban it tells me I need to go get another one you know here's another one that tells what's in here I want to show you a couple things in here you know I develop my own Kanban so things like oh you know things like the my gum you know I like to keep some gum in my office and so it's a two bin system and I've got another one underneath uh, when I use one the empty box is my signal I'll actually put that near my bag and that'll be the signal I need to replenish from home uh, here are some, uh, you know, paper clips, binder clips, um, and it says what's in there. I don't know if I can move that to the side so you can see it says paper clips in there. It says uh, five mini binder clips are here for replenishing. There's three. Okay, so when I'm, when I use those three, I'm not out. Okay, I've got more, and I made this just this little thing out of paper and a little tape uh, tab, and you lift up, and underneath are five more binder clips. But that's my Kanban, and it tells me um, I can use the ones underneath. You know, lift this up, but when I lift that up, that's my signal. Go get five more and uh, replenish. So I don't have to keep, you know, I can keep these in a real small space in my office. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. And, um, yeah, and I never run out. You know, I've always got a few. I always have exactly what I need, and and uh, I never run out. Now, you know, I've got stuff in my office, and it's on desks and things like this, like my um, hole punch. But the location of these items is not just uh, random. So, in other words, I don't just lay them out on my desk so that they're all in a row, so that everything looks really neat, uh, and then put a blue tape line around it and say, "Well, there you go. That's my office." But um, it's actually changed over the years depending on how I use it. So, for instance, here's my three-hole punch. Now, when I first came into my office uh, and first set up in here, um, I knew I needed a three-hole punch for my class notes to keep them in binders. And so um, I said, well, you know, I think it's going to look nice to have the hole punch uh, back against the back wall, back over here, because it's out of the way and it looks neat up against the wall. Um, but I learned as I was using my process that that's not the best place for my hole punch. So um, here's the printer. So here's my computer. Put together class notes. Print them out on the printer. Now here's what happens. I'll reach over. I'll grab the notes off the printer. I'll bring them over here. Now the papers are oriented. Let's see if I can grab a piece of paper real quick and show you kind of how this would work. Here are the notes. Um, they come out of the printer uh, like this. I'd grab them. I'd set them over here on the table. Then I'd have to pull the hole punch around. Then I'd have to pick up the papers again, put them into the hole punch. And then I'd have to hole punch. And then I'd pull this out. And then I'd have to slide my hole punch back, um, you know, if I wanted to keep it looking neat. And then I've got my class notes punched here. But I said, why am I doing all this excessive motion? This is just non-value added. Now, picking up and putting down and moving and sliding. So what I did was I said, well, if I keep my hole punch here, then when I pull my notes off of the printer, I can just bring them over, put them into the hole punch, punch, and I've got them, and I don't have to move anything. I've eliminated some pickups and put downs and made my 
office process um, more value added. Okay. Um, and then here's my phone. Now, you know, I put a label on my phone and I put my phone number. This is sort of the office, uh, inner office code for my phone, uh, right on, um, right in front of my phone because I'll be honest, I don't remember my own phone number uh, for my office. And so this way, if I need to give it out, I've got it right there, right away. These are phone numbers, people that I contact most often. There's a place for everything. Everything has its place. Um, so, you know, so I've got a place for the stapler and then a little uh, note telling where to replenish the staples from. I do have uh, instructional assistants, other people that will come in and need to use things in my office. So I've got instructions so that they aren't lost about where things are in my office. Um, and these are in the order in which I typically use them. I use the stapler the most, my um, calculator, and then the uh, the tape dispenser. Now, when I first came into my office, I didn't know how to set it up, and so I was just trying things. I, I put the tape over here and the stapler over here. And I found I was using the stapler more, and when I needed to staple something, see there's no room by the printer to staple, I'd have to reach over, grab the stapler, pull it out here, and then staple it and put it back. And, uh, you know, so over time I just realized I can eliminate non-value-added motion by having my stapler here so that items that I need to staple can go right in. I can staple, nothing's in the way. Makes it easy. Um, and so, you know, I've got places for things and outlines for things just to show uh, where that item is supposed to be so that I know if something's in place or something's not in place. We've got, you know, large post-it notes or you know, where my phone goes or I, I like this one. Um, this highlighter would sort of roll around. Well, let's see here. See? A highlighter kind of rolls around on the table when it, it's not, um, you know, the highlighter isn't uh, balanced so it ends up rolling. And uh, I got this little foam thing, made a cut out in the foam and set that down in there for the highlighter and then with well, that thing is never never goes anywhere so that's really neat. Um, and I do use uh, this visual management uh, and I'll start to try to tell you about this. The visual management in my office helps me to helps to guide what I need to do each day. So uh, as an example, uh, you know I've got a lot of uh, things uh, in my office where you know that it is in the place where it needs to be uh, but then there are other things that are not where they need to be like this and the, even the things that aren't in place give me signals in my office so for instance this is something that I'm working on um, just to, uh, trying to develop uh, some new materials for a class and so the items that aren't in place signal to me this is work in process and this is something that you need to address uh, to get it off your desk and get it in a place uh, you know where it belongs and so that tells me that's work that I need to begin working on. So I'm going to show you some about how I use um, standardization in my office. So um, standardized layouts for things and the standardization helps me to know where items are uh, and what's next. So now this semester I'm teaching two classes. I'm teaching this productivity and quality class and I'm teaching ERP and so um, I've got this as part of my standard work throughout my office and so let me try to show you some some of the standardization so you can see here productivity and quality over here on the left side of my board and uh, you know schedules and these are um, instructions for some of my assistants uh, related to that class and then on the right is uh, ERP because I teach productivity and quality on Monday Wednesday and ERP on Tuesday, Thursday, so I have productivity and quality listed first. But this convention I use everywhere in my office. So for instance, here, this is my uh, email inbox. And you can see, you know, one of the things I consider email to be uh, inventory. And that is, uh, that's inventory that I need to work on. So I try to be just in time for my uh, email. And you can see I've just got a couple of emails that are here. Uh, and so when new emails come in, I work hard to clear them out of my inbox. It's one way that I can uh, try to be responsive to students. But over here on the left where I've got my folders, you can see I've got uh, productivity and quality listed first. I don't even know. I don't know if that maybe is a little blurry, but we'll see. Uh, productivity and quality listed first, ERP listed second. And the way I got them listed first and second is I put uh, an A and then an AA in front of that in front of each of them uh, so that when it sorts alphabetically it puts those at the top of my list in that order so I've got productivity and quality first and then ERP just like uh, that's on my bulletin board I'll show you another one 
Uh, this is uh, my Blackboard, and so I have uh, ERP, or I'm sorry, Productivity and Quality listed first, and ERP listed second. And uh, any of you can do this. Reorder these things. If you go here to the this little gear, the tools, uh, you open that up, and it will allow you to sort sort of your dashboard in the order you want it. So I put Productivity and Quality first. So when I go and click on a class or go to put file an email away, something along those lines, I don't have to search for where to put it because it's in the same place every time. Uh, also on my desktop I do the same thing. Here's those two classes. Here's productivity and quality and ERP, you know, uh, productivity and quality on the left, ERP on the right, um, and then I will reorder these. So if I teach additional classes or teach other classes, I move them around on my desktop, you know, get, get rid of them someplace um, so that whatever the first class is I teach is on the left second one is on the right so they're pretty easy to configure and you can see I mean it's just some tape and a label and I can put tape over that and relabel those anytime I've got that same convention over here on my office Kanban here's my office Kanban and you can see I've got three folders here and some semesters I'll teach three classes so uh, this one I've got you know just taped over and so it's uh, unused uh, but here's you know, the one for this class, Productivity and Quality, and there's ERP, and the class notes are in that folder. And when I go to use those class notes, I pull the class notes out, and back behind it says Notes Needed. And so this is another um, thing that tells me when I need to get work done. So when I walk into my office, and this is what I see, and I see the big sign that says Notes Needed, that's a signal to me that I need to prepare and plan for the next class session, and get those notes and put them into uh, the Kanban folder, and then, of course, right above in the cabinet, I've got my, uh, you know, sort of three bins here uh, to hold the class notes or course materials for classes, and here's productivity and quality, and there's ERP, and I don't know if you can tell, but uh, these labels have been taped over several times, because each semester, if I teach different classes, uh, those things change. So, um, this kind of gives you an overview of my office and how I'm using visual management and some lean principles to create standardization to make sure that my processes stay, stay stable uh, so that things don't change in my process uh, unnecessarily so things are where I know where they are and I can always find them and uh, I've eliminated waste from my process so uh, you're welcome to come and take a look at my office and visit in person anytime you'd like love to see it and I am really looking forward to seeing how you use visual management and the principles of lean to improve your own processes.